Hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm vlog today. We have our baby chicks and our baby chicks came from Meyer Hatchery. And we've got a little bit of a problem with them. The stress of all this movement has caused them to have what we call pasty butt or poopy butt. So the birds have a little bit of poop on their butt and we're gonna show you how to fix that problem. And we're gonna introduce some new baby guinea fowl to our other birds. So our other birds are about a week old and the guinea fowl is about a week old. My neighbor gave me some guineas and we're gonna put them in there. So come along, we'll learn a little bit today, have some fun and check out the baby birds. All right, woo! So we get all our birds from Meyer Hatchery. We worked together with Meyer Hatchery to put some of these videos out. And first thing I wanted to show you was the difference between these two birds. So this is a Cornish cross bird, and this is a Rainbow Ranger broiler bird. Now we're at about a week out, and they're just about the same size. They're maturing at just about the same rate, and they're consuming just about the same amount of food. Pretty cute, pretty cute little birds. Now I'm gonna take one of these birds and compare it to a standard egg laying birds. So we have some barred rock chicks in here and I'll show you the difference between the heavier meat bird versus the barred rock chick which is going to be our laying hen. All right, the little buggers are fast. So this is the difference. This is the rainbow ranger broiler and this is the barred rock. So what a difference in the size of the bird. This bird's probably twice the weight of this bird right here. These are going to be just beautiful, beautiful laying hens. I just want to show you the difference in the birds here. They don't like being handled too much. Now let's talk about poopy butt. This is going to be kind of funny, but <laughs> this is what I need to show you. So this is a standard chicken butt, okay? So this is a chicken without poopy butt. And this is what your chickens, a healthy baby chick, should look like. It's okay, little friend. So that's what their butt should look like. That's called the vent, okay? So the chicken doesn't have a place where pee comes out or poop comes out or the egg comes out, it all comes out in the same place and that's called the vent. Some of these birds' vents are getting clogged up and the reason they're getting clogged up is because of stress. The stress of the birds can cause these vents to clog up. It can also cause them to have diarrhea. The diarrhea can cause them to be dehydrated. So these things you need to address. So some of the stresses that they might have is being too cold or being too hot. I can actually feel this little bird shivering right now, even though it's in my hand. So we need to get them back down into the brooder. It's probably 75 degrees outside and we need to keep our birds somewhere a little bit above 80, 85 degrees at this point. We're a week out. He's so cool, so cute. So the next bird we reach in and get is gonna have poopy butt or pasty butt, okay? All right, so this is pasty butt, and you can see the vent on this bird is not cool. Now the simple solution to this is I have a warm towel and I'm gonna soak, okay? You don't wanna pull this off, you just wanna soak it. You wanna get it moist and you wanna get it wet and you wanna wash it off, okay? So we'll gently rub this poop off. I think you get it without me showing you a bird's butthole for too awful long. But what we wanna do is just gently Caress the bird, don't be mean to them, don't put them in distress, and just gently rub until this manure comes off the back side of the bird. And what this can do is over time, it can clog up and it can actually kill your birds. If you look sometimes at your local feed supply store and you see the birds are having poopy butt or pasty butt, please don't be afraid to say something to the people because they don't want their birds to die and they don't want their birds to be sick or upset. Be sure guys, if, uh, if you're in, one of your local feed stores and you see birds with pasty butt go ahead and tell the people that are taking care of the birds because they don't want them to get harmed so what we're slowly doing here and what you want to avoid you don't want to pick it off like a scab you want to just moisten it until it comes off so you want a fairly almost dripping wet rag okay and you want to just gently break apart that manure and that's what i'm doing just while i'm talking to you gently breaking apart that manure you can hear all the babies over here. Those guineas really want to get out of this dark box and in with the other birds. And while I'm doing this, while I'm cleaning the vent on this bird, and we have probably three birds that have this issue, while I'm gently cleaning the vent, if you pull too hard, you can pull the skin off of this bird and you can kill it. So you've gotta be very, very gentle. These baby birds, they're resilient, they're tough, but you can't be really rough with them. You have to be gentle, especially in a soft area like its backside. 
Now you don't want to use cold water, you want to use warm water. And if you use that warm water, see I'm just kind of pinching it and twisting it. If you use nice warm water, it'll break it up really nicely. And this problem should be over, okay? If it comes back, you just continue to do this. See if you can remove anything that you might find as a stressor for your baby birds. Be it too hot, be it too cold, be it too crowded. All right. So here is what a clean poopy butt looks like. That's it. So we got him all cleaned up. He's a little bit inflamed there on his backside. That's okay. That's all right. Got our sweet little bird here. He's doing great. We're going to go ahead and we'll pick out a couple more birds and get the poopy off of their butts. And that's how you get rid of pasty butt. So next we're going to put our guinea fowl in here with our chicks. Now I don't recommend doing this if your birds are older than a week old because these little guinea birds are only about this big. They're really, really fast. They're really, really cute, but they're tiny. And the other birds are massive compared to them and they could peck them and hurt them. So let's get our guineas, I'll show you. So in this box, we have six little baby guinea birds and they are little cute, tiny little birds and they are rambunctious little critters. So whee, be careful little guy. If I didn't trust the source where these birds were coming from, I wouldn't put them in, but I know they're coming from my neighbor who takes good care of their birds and I know that they're disease free. So we'll put these guys in here. Birds can carry diseases from one farm to the next. So say you go to the local livestock swap and you buy yourself some chickens, don't put them in together until you know those birds are healthy, okay? So we're gonna reach in here and we'll get out our baby guineas and we'll set them down. There we go. There you go, little fellas. There you go. There you go, little guys. New home. So it looks like the guineas are mixing well with the other chicks. I don't see anybody picking or pecking on each other. The baby guineas are thirsty. They've been in that box for about a half hour, 45 minutes or so. So they've gone to water. Um, it's normal for there to be a little touch of tension between these birds for just a little while and that's totally to be expected, but they'll eventually bond as a family together and they'll be okay. You never really want to put one chick in with a bunch of other chicks. If you do that, it's going to get picked on, it's going to get harmed and likely lose its life. Same with adult chickens. Let's reach in here and we'll get another bird that has a vent issue, okay, it has pasty butt. Now remember, this is chicken poop, okay? No matter how cute these little birds are, no matter how sweet you think they are and you want to cuddle them all up next to your face, don't you worry, they carry a little bit of disease called salmonella and it's naturally occurring bacteria that's in their gut that can make you sick. So be sure when you get done, you use some nice soap and water and clean your hands, rinse them thoroughly, okay? So this guy's got a little crusty on his butt too. We'll get him all cleaned up and we'll show you one more after that. This is a very, very simple process. When I first started raising birds, I didn't know what to do here. So now I'm showing you. Here you go, little buddy. Baby chicks have to be happy on both ends, <laughs> mouth and the butt. <laughs> I'll make it abundantly clear that this situation will not correct itself without you. You need to take care of it, okay? If you don't take care of it, the bird could die or the other birds could start pecking it. It could get a bloody spot on its backside and that could cause some issues. So you've got to take care of this. You really have to supervise your birds and make sure that you're being a good bird mama or a good bird daddy, good chicken mama, chicken daddy. So the baby birds vent is here and their belly button is right there. It's a little red spot. You can barely see. He doesn't like being there. I'm sorry, I tickled his belly button. <laughs> There you go, buddy. Now here is a moderately severe case of pasty butt, okay? And this is a smaller chick and you can see if this continues, it's gonna stop up the baby bird's vent and he will no longer be able to make stool and consequently he'll die. So gotta take care of him. You may think you're hurting your bird, but you're not. They'll fully recover. They'll go right back in and start eating and drinking right away. Biggest thing is don't pick, don't pick at it. Just rub it gently, soak and rub. It's okay, little friend. Kind of like if your kids get eye boogers. So if you're worried about getting poop on your fingers, if this is too gross for you to do, then go buy yourself some gloves. Um, this is Baby Chickens 101. Well, guys, I'm gonna get busy working on these birds. If you have any questions, be sure and leave them down there in the comments. I'll try to address every 
question anybody might have. Uh, we have a whole series on raising chickens, so there'll be a playlist there in the video description and also scrolling across right now. There'll be a raising chickens playlist and uh, you can learn a whole lot there. So even if you've raised chickens before, there's still a lot to learn. We can all learn from each other. Guys, thanks a lot for coming to the Stony Ridge Farm today. We'll see you next time. Got to take care of our baby birds. All right. Be sure and pound that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. All right. Woo! Land of the free and the home of the brave. I'm proud of who I am and I'm proud of what I made on the Stony Ridge. Woo! You're strong. <laughs> So the baby guinea fowl are doing great. They're mixing in great. They were a little bit cold, so they're underneath the heat lamp. Now you see the other birds that are right here? They're as far away from that heat lamp as they possibly can get. What this tells me is there's too much heat in this brooder. So what we're gonna do is we'll leave the lamp on the baby birds, the baby guinea birds for a little while until they start moving around a little bit and they get over with the rest of the birds. We'll know everybody's warm enough and then we'll shut our light back off. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of eh, 75 degrees or something like that. But this many birds in this small of an area, there'll be plenty of heat from their bodies to keep them warm. So we really don't have to keep a brooder lamp on them at this point. Now, it looks crowded in here. It's gonna look crowded. It'll look more and more crowded for the next few days, but be assured we're gonna move these birds out to a larger coop out here on pasture pretty soon. Be pretty cool.